Well, good evening, everybody. It's Jessica Jones. I'm the Cryptid Huntress. And man, we've got another great show tonight. I cannot wait. Uh, we're going to be talking about something super interesting. And I'm pretty sure each and every one of you guys has heard about these metal monoliths that started showing up all over the world about four years ago, I guess. And, uh, and there was a new one that just showed up in Wales about one month ago. And, uh, and so... This was a suggested target by our friend, Dennis Carroll. Okay, Dennis is a regular co-host with me here on the channel. And, uh, and he suggested this a, about a month ago, I guess. So it got thrown into the pot of all the, the targets, suggested targets. And, uh, and here we are tonight. Okay, so that one was picked. It was assigned a set of coordinates. Uh, and that was one that came out of the pot. Okay, so this is what we're doing tonight. We're talking about metal monoliths all over the world and i remote viewed one on mars okay on mars i did an off-planet target this is an off-planet target uh and by the way buzz aldrin talks about this one okay so uh these are this is kind of important y'all this is kind of important so uh so i have barry littleton here in the studio tonight uh we are really going to go in deep down the rabbit hole again tonight uh on some really cool topics tonight okay well if you guys would like to follow along with all my shows and everything that i'm doing please go to my website that's the cryptidhuntress.com you can find all of my shows all of the events that i'm going to be speaking at everything that i got going on is on that website also i have all of the data for tonight posted in my patreon if you guys would like to uh, follow along with the data shout out to all of my patreon members gosh i love you guys um you know you can you can join my patreon for free you can also join it uh, as a paid member uh, the free members i do put some content up for everybody and then i put all the content up which is like the data for all the all the paying members okay and uh, and i got some a1 day ones in that patreon family so thank you guys so much it really does mean the world to me Okay, also, uh, if you guys would like to buy some really cool jewelry, I sell vintage Native American turquoise. It's a, this is my small business I've had for almost 10 years now. Uh, you guys can go to War Woman Goods on Etsy and purchase some jewelry or some vintage goods. And I do put in free Cryptid Huntress merch with every purchase. Uh, so thank you guys so much for your support. All right, well, let's get to our show tonight, okay? Because I have Barry here in the studio, and y'all know Barry and I could talk for hours on all of this stuff. So Barry is one of the, I, I'd say he's a very cutting edge researcher, one of the top in the field uh, on all things paranormal, especially when it comes to extraterrestrials, UFOs, and cryptids, and other other wild stuff. Uh, so please help me welcome to the show my friend, Barry Littleton. Hey, Barry. Hey, what's up? <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Thank you so much for being here. Hey, no problem. Thank you for having me. This is an interesting target. I wasn't the one that suggested it, so I'm surprised Dennis isn't here. So thank you for having me. He, oh, yeah. Uh, pretty, well, thank pretty, you. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool target. Different, you know? It is. It is. It's very different. And now, I, I remember a few years ago, I heard about these metal pillars. It's like a, a metal pillar kind of showing up out of nowhere. But I had no idea that there were like, I mean, there were literally, they say 50, some, some places where you read, but I was finding like hundreds of these things scattered all over the world. Now, what do you know about these metal monoliths that started <laughs> popping up back in 2020? <laughs> uh, you go right in with this, aren't you? That's cool. Yeah. Right away, hello well, to the audience too, a bunch of good people out there. Um, you know, honestly, that most of them are fakes, that it was a group of like some advanced artists that were putting these things in remote um, areas. And I had seen a video where people were like, showing um dissection that showed these things having these rivets these these hidden, these like kind of advanced rivets that were hidden in a way and the construction of them and i tried to find that video again and i can't seem to find it but there's so much stuff because people started stealing these things or the artists themselves disassembled them or took them away stole them but i read they were stolen so everything when you start kind of looking it up on like YouTube and things that comes up a lot about them being stolen as opposed to the people that said they made them. And, you know, so that think, I think that's um, just food for thought when looking at these things, you know, and what it actually is supposed to represent though, <clears throat> excuse me, what these things are supposed to represent 
is from a break off for, from, I believe, uh, 2001 The Space Odyssey, that movie, which they had the monolith that came to Earth. Actually, it came to mm -hmm. like the moon first, and then it, near the moon, then it came to Earth, and it waited for Earth to become a type one civilization that it opened up that we were part of, uh, could be part of like galactic civilization. And um, when dealing, so that's, yeah, that's, you know, first when that movie starts off, when the monolith comes to Earth, the like the the the, the crow mags are jumping around oh you know and then so eventually <laughs> they start evolving and then around the, the monolith is still there what that really is supposed to be in science fiction wise is what's called a bracewell probe all right and a bracewell probe is a probe that actually goes to another civil another solar system and looks for type one civilization in life and then makes contact and there's also something called a von neumann probe and a von Neumann probe is more self-replicating and self-repairing also. And that kind of leads into the third one that's called the Berserker probe, which is basically um, an alien probe that destroys civilizations. And when you think of that, the one that's gone Berserker and self-replicates and self-repairs and destroys civilizations. And when thinking of something like that, it's kind of like maybe, oh, that Star Trek, the original series, was one called the Doomsday. Dooms Doomsday Machine, where this thing looks like a Koopa, a Copa Copa Cornucopia destroying eating these planets. Yeah. So anyway, just food for thought again, but that's my understanding of it. Okay. Hmm. Well, well, the the first time that that I heard about these was back in 2020. Um, there was a there were biologists that were actually flying in a helicopter over Utah. And uh, it was biologists from the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. They were conducting a survey on bighorn sheep in southeastern Utah. One of the biologists spotted something fishy, something off down in a rock formation in the desert. He immediately informed the pilot to fly back, and check out what it was. And what the entire crew on that helicopter saw was something that we call today the Utah monolith. Now, this monolith is gone today. It was taken down. Uh, there was a gentleman who is a wildlife photographer who actually got video and pictures of the game warden or whoever it was. I guess it was the Utah Division of Natural Resources came in and took took this thing down. And uh, and I thought it was really interesting because uh, after after this one showed up, uh, I believe they said that they thought it had been there since. I think they said it had been there for a while, but it was just discovered. Okay, and uh, and we'll let's see if I can find the data. I have so many notes tonight. Um, but but all of a sudden these things started popping up like wildfire all over the world, and we're talking about. I mean, I'm going to show the audience pictures tonight of every almost every one that I can find online, and some of them are actually inside stores and shops. Some of them are on the sidewalks and boardwalks of major cities, uh, but mostly they're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then, of those course, we're going to... The, the, the ones that are out in the middle of nowhere, I think most all the ones we're seeing are bad made. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't know. Your data will show whatever it is. We'll see. I may be completely wrong, and it could be this great interdimensional thing that they're popping up, but oh, my spider sense is tingling. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. it is it is odd okay and and some people have said that it's it's kind of like graffiti art you know it, it's the it's comparable to graffiti graffiti art like banksy okay banksy is a famous graffiti artist i believe he's from the uk i'm pretty sure and uh and he has some really cool uh he has some really good cool graffiti it's it's you can't not tell what's banky banksy art okay and uh and there's actually one of the monoliths if I can find it here, it actually has a rat, one of the Banksy rats on it. And uh, and that that is something that's one of his signatures. And it says at the bottom, it says not Banksy. <laughs> okay. Um, because these these things are kind of like pop, pop art now, pop culture, pop art. Uh, it just, it, it became very well known. Okay. It really did. And, uh, and I want to, <laughs> it's like, no, right. See if I can find. Okay, so the guy who I was talking about, the guy who videoed this one in Utah. Okay, um, he said that he he kept stressing. He said, "Well, I, it just looked like junk." Okay, in, in this interview that I watched that he was giving, he said, "There's something that 
that they the people who go hiking a lot people that are out in nature like myself okay you always hear about leave no trace okay this was this was very much an environmental issue for this guy according to what he was saying uh, he said it, he said it was a 100 percent definitely an art installation he said definitely not alien and it was junk basically and uh, and he kept stressing in this video he said it was it was right for them to remove it because it was just a bunch of junk but see people all over the world barry are saying well this could be something made by aliens it looks kind of like an obelisk from the ancient egyptians had that we have in all these town squares all over the world and all over the united states uh it it, it looked like it i guess the fact that it was metal made it look futuristic you know and uh and like it might have been dropped by some alien like an alien probe right uh, and that there's a whole movie based on it that's like from the 60s that's that has nothing to do with it, I'm sure. <laughs> well, okay. Well, it's kind of timely too, because when this started getting dropped was around the time that we were having lockdowns and there was a particular virus that kind of showed up and, uh, and, and the world got turned upside down kind of for a little while. The entire world did. And, uh, and people, I think, were thinking the worst. Okay. They were thinking the worst. We were buckling up for a... Uh, what, what you I know you hate talking about this, but we talked about the fake alien invasion, right? Yeah. Or an alien invasion. And so dun dun dun. We've got all I these mean, alien in, probes. In, 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 all, in, in all reality, though, it's good you bring that up because you on another show exposed some of that. And that being that uh the whole fake thing going on at the Miami mall that no one even talks about anymore. That went out just like that. It you did. know what I mean? That whole deal and, and uh, all investigations of it and everything. But that was what, when we reviewed that, you showed that to be part It's kind of part of this in fake invasion thing, which is going to be holographic thing. And I'm so, it, you're right. I am totally sick of hearing that because I think it's the way they're trying to mess up our timeline. It really is yeah. messing up real contact and the things that are behind real contact and with other civilizations, and interdimensionals that no yeah. one wants to get down. It's a conscious thing, but no one wants to talk about that. Let's, stay materialist and you know <laughs> give a work about a fake holographic invasion yeah and being a contactee like you a real one you know as well as i do if that was the agenda we wouldn't be here now that's right that's right i agree with that 100 percent. now I, I forgot to read the intro okay i'm super excited to get into this show tonight so i didn't really read the overview like i normally read okay so so let me let me go back and rewind and let, let's read this overview because I think it's going to set the tone for the, what else I have to say tonight. Okay, so soon after the Utah discovery on November 18th of 2020, report, reports emerged on social media of similar metal columns being found in many other places throughout the world, including places in North America, South America, Central America, Europe, Africa, India. Okay, these, these are all over the place. Uh, over 200 similar metal columns have been reported in various locations around the world. The origins of them vary. Some monoliths were made by artists inspired by news coverage of the original Utah pillar, like the two Pittsburgh mono monoliths. I'm going to show you one, at least one of those tonight. They were made by local businesses for promotional purposes. Um, some monoliths were subse subsequently removed. Uh, despite the word monolith referring to a single great stone, these sculptures were made mostly made of metal, and the name derives from the monolith that appeared in the 1968 science fiction film 2001 Space Odyssey, just like you mentioned. Uh, this connection gave rise in speculation about the extraterrestrial origin, origin, although the phenomenon has also been viewed as a craze or an internet hoax. Um, with a number of features in common with crop circles. So these things are popping up. They got compared to crop circles, Barry. But crop circles, you and I, when we have studied crop circles and you gave me those blind targets for that, those things were messages to humanity. Okay. Now, these uh, well, you, pillars. You know, you know, I just want to throw this in real quick. What is, you've got those two guys that were going around, Doug and Dave, whatever, saying they were making most of them. And that somehow just got thrown in there to discredit the real ones that were going on. So, sorry, but that makes sense yeah. how they would compare that to these monoliths. Sorry, please keep going. It would. Oh, no, that's, 
that's about it. Okay, so oh man. Okay, so so what I've done. Okay, I want to go through and show some pictures to the audience before we before we continue. Okay, because there's so many of these now. These are just some that I found online. Okay, here we go from Utah, Columbia, the Isle of Wight. Let me take my banner down. Okay, we have California, Joshua Tree, Pittsburgh, Romania, and Holland. Okay, now I actually have more pictures. And uh, besides that, I mean, and some of these may be repeating, but I mean, when any time that I've seen an, an interview, like a video of them, when people go up to these things, they're not solid, Barry. You, when they knock on it, it sounds hollow, like it's just sheet metal. Uh, every one of them, not not a single one of them. Like, and, and you can see at the bottom, there's a person standing there uh, on the far left. You can see that it doesn't even go all the way into the ground, and it's got like wood underneath it. So it's not like you know, <laughs> to me. But but see, but here here's an interesting one. This is out of Turkey. It one of the oldest temples in the world, and uh, they seem to have some. Uh, I don't know, security. <laughs> We're gonna say they have security at that one, you know. They're like, okay, well, who put this there? I mean, that that looks like that would be very dangerous to put anything right there. Where is that one again? That's in Turkey. Go, I can't pronounce this word, Gobeka Tempe. What is that word? It's the oldest temple. Gobeke Tempe. That's a Gobeke yes. Tempe. I've never seen yes. that before. As it's, part of that, said, but they're but they're pulling so much of that out of the desert now that it's unreal. So it's like it's like huge. So it may be true. I have to look into that. Well, That's good they said information. That they said that it's near it. It's not actually on right there on site, but it's right near it is what the article is saying. Um, but we yeah. also have, I mean, this is, I think this is in Finland, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is funny. Okay, so South, if, if, I don't know if y'all have ever ridden on Southwest Airlines. I know I have. And, uh, and they, they even made a joke about it. They said that they needed their, they needed their pillar back. Okay, that's uh, they're making jokes about it. About that actually came from Southwest Airlines. That shows you where to stand in line before you get on the air, airplane. Okay, <laughs> so, um, but anyways, uh, but yeah, I mean these things are just kind of out in the middle of pastures, um, on top of mountains. I mean there was one that showed up in Wales about four weeks ago, uh, and I was watching a, an interview about it earlier, right before the show started. And uh, there was a there was a man that was being interviewed about it who was around his 30s. He said that he walked up on this structure joking around about how, how he believed in aliens. and It looked very alien like. And um, it, I guess they said that it was really hard to hike up on that mountain, that it wasn't like something that just anybody could just go drag a big old pillar of metal up this this hill or this mountain hillside. That it, it, it was it was. They were they were insinuating they're like do you believe in aliens you know this could be alien and that's what they kept saying however it, it was just a big joke too at the same time um but yeah and, you know and I, I hate to say it but you know there's also the possibility because i see so the level of hoax is like are some of those pictures cgi or something like that or, or ai you know what i mean generated and i'd like to see more of just you know pictures of some of those like are they even really there you know what I mean? We get so much oh, false stuff. Man. I'm not saying that's correct, but I mean, it's just, I want to throw that out there because I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, this one here is in Poland. And uh, and if you look at the bottom of that, it's it's down there in the sand and you can see the bottom. It's not solidly down in there in the ground. Like, it, it just looks flimsy to me. I don't know. It, it doesn't <laughs> look like, I would think that if these were some sort of alien probes or something, it would be like solid. Okay, and it would go all the way in the ground, and I don't. It's just my imagination, I guess, running running away with me, here. But um, no, not really, not really. No, you know, no. I mean, not, you know I, I I think it is. It, it's interesting because it takes us into the real talk. I think we'll do. We'll go deeper into what really is a mm -hmm. Bracewell Pro from a bigger okay. perspective. Okay, this is the one that has Banksy's rat on it. Uh, this one right here is interesting. This is in South Africa. Okay, so you have to assume that was that's for publicity purposes, I assume. Um, that's in the middle of a shop. Okay, and then this is one of the ones that was in Pittsburgh on a sidewalk right there in front of a, looks like a candy shop. And uh, this is in Belgium. 
uh, I, find, I find it interesting. Uh, they all look very similar. They all look almost exactly alike. Uh, this one is in India. And then we have this really interesting one. I know you. we talked about how this one definitely looks man-made. Uh, it looks like somebody got their, their saw out or their welder or whatever and made circles all over it. <laughs> it's got some, it's got some uh, scenes on the side there, too. <laughs> Is that, that gang like graffiti? Is that gang graffiti on the side? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, you can see, but you can see the seams on it, and it, it honestly looks like a, 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 a college or high school project. Okay, right there. Uh, somebody that's just learning how to weld. Okay, I mean that just that just looks silly right there. But um, but uh, but yeah. So I had mentioned that the the there was a photographer who got video and pictures of workers coming in and taking the one down in Utah. And uh, this is this is some pictures of them taking that one down. They removed it, so that that got taken down. And that's the one the guy was saying was junk. That one. Yes, that's the one he was saying that it was, and it was really odd because the guy was like so animate about it's junk and it needed to go. It's no trace left behind, no trace, and it's just. Are, there's, he said it's absolutely not alien. Well, how did he know when they were, those guys were going to be there to take that thing down? It got suspicious in the back of my mind. Um, it almost feels, uh, and there's there's even videos of groups of guys that are like, oh, we made we made the metal monoliths. And so you go into the comments of these videos and you read it and people go, oh, how, how convenient for them to put it out there saying they made them. This is probably them pretending that they did it they were told to do this it's what do you call those psyops or whatever so you know we're going to find out because i remote viewed it y'all very yeah, we, we got some data that's what we I'm, got all, some data. I'm all ears i'm all ears okay well oh and look, before before we go into the data i do want to go through all the places where there are other monoliths the metal ones so we've got um in asia we've got india Africa, the Democratic Republic of the Cond Congo. We have one in Morocco. Uh, these are all in 2020, by the way. Uh, Morocco, we have Austria, Belgium. Belgium has, Austria has like six, okay? Uh, Belgium has at least three. The Czech Republic has at least one. Finland, of all places, has one, two, three, four, five, six, has seven. France, France of all places, has at least five. In Germany, okay, and this is, doesn't even include the United States, okay, uh, but Germany has, okay, let me count, hold on, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, has 12. Germany has 12. Okay, that's that's a lot. I mean, I, okay, is, is there one artist or are there groups of artists? If, if, if they're artists, you know, Oh, and there's one in Georgia, by the way. Okay, so I found one in Noonan, Georgia. That and guess where that is, Barry? It's where I do my where we do some of our research. I said the Troop Herd Corridor right down there, where I do my research, uh, where we have the highest concentration of alien abductions in the South. Yep. So right beside uh, Fort Benning, actually, it's like an airborne school, I think, for the Army. Okay. <laughs> of course. I want to hear this. I want to hear this data because I'm sorry. I, I I need you to make me a believer in this. I I'm not giving okay. really any 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 stuff to this. So I, I, th this is going to show because I could be completely wrong, and I will accept okay. that if I'm absolutely wrong. I may be. Okay. So the first target is the monolith out of Utah. Okay. This is the one in Utah, and uh, the actual prompt was what was the prompt? What was? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, the metal monolith in Utah, what is the origin and who put it there and why? Okay, that's kind of the, the target prompt right there. Okay, so uh, on this target, some of my, and, and this, all of the data is in the Patreon, if you guys want to see this. And I got a good bit, I got a lot of data, actually. Um, okay, so some of the sensory data for this, I was picking up on something that was created, constructed, a building, I wrote down building, um, or, or building, because it's like an adjective. Okay, so that was some of my sensory stuff. Um, but I was picking up something that was modern and tall, hard and angled and sharp. Okay, so I was actually, what I thought I was looking at, honestly, was a pyramid. 
Okay, so I thought I was remote viewing a pyramid at first, or when I got done with it. Um, so I, I wrote uh, built to last, a symbol, symbolic or symbol. Uh, I wrote down fireproof, fireproof, but I also wrote down inverted, which I think is very interesting. So inverted, um, I wrote down, so in the data, I wrote down Georgia Guidestones. Okay, so uh, if the audience will remember, okay, now um, we're talking about the one, this is the one that got has pictures of it being de deconstructed and taken down. Well, what happened in Georgia with the Georgia Guidestones about two years ago? They got taken down, okay? And this is very symbolic. Okay, so I could have very easily been remote viewing the Georgia Guidestones in this target. Uh, because I did write that down thinking that that's what I was looking at. That's interesting. Yeah. And those are very symbolic. Okay. So, um, okay. So I wrote down Georgia Guidestones. Uh, I, was, I wrote down towers. Um, I wrote down a word that I don't know what it means. And I forgot to look it up, but I wrote down the word abashed. Abashed. So I don't even know what that means. If anybody in the audience knows what that is, y'all let me know. But I was picking up on something that was... Um, I actually wrote down Freemasonry. Okay, so Freemasonry, and I was I was seeing things that were like mile markers or uh, miles, miles and miles, mile markers. So I don't know what that has to do with this, but I was picking up on something that was like angular with sharp edges on it. Um, I also wrote down ley lines in a in pyramid. Okay, so remember earlier I, I started thinking that I was seeing, yes, like bashed. It was bashed so maybe that maybe it's bashed thank you blanche yeah so ley lines and pyramid so i so obviously i was picking up on something that was like put on ley lines or there was something interesting that was symbolic much like the georgia guidestones the georgia guidestones are actually were they're they're demolished now but they were in a place that the native americans call the belly button of the world and it's where a bunch of ley lines intersect right there in northeast georgia just FYI, okay. Um, but I was picking up on something that um, I was seeing. Of course, I was seeing rocks and things like that. So I was definitely on target on this one. Um, but I was picking up on something. That I actually wrote down metallic, and I started feeling super confused when I was looking at all this. So I was I was having a, a hard time trying to kind of decipher what I was looking at because I was all, I was thinking Georgia Guidestones, but I was also thinking pyramid. Okay. Um, but I wrote down lightning and lightning bolt and something that had to do with the electricity. And I wrote down power generator. That's what I wrote down uh, in electric. Uh, and then I, and then I 100% I wrote down environment and environmental. Okay. So, so that's kind of my, I, that's not all the data, but it's all the important stuff, like in a nutshell, kind of right there. And I did, um, I drew what looks like to be kind of like a pyramid. Okay. Let's see. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Cryptoville. Abashed. Adjective, embarrassed. Dis disconcerted or ashamed. Okay. Well, those people should be ashamed if this is a hoax. <laughs> Just saying. But uh, but but that's interesting, though, right? I mean, I, I wasn't picking up on anything alien. Okay. Um, I was picking up on something that was, to me, it seemed man-made. And... Um, but it had something to do with Freemasonry or something that had to do with symbolic symbology. It had, I mean, that's Freemasonry could be seen as kind of a cultish, right? Very. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't argue that, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> I don't get so many, too many, too many tomatoes thrown at me, you know, it's but okay. I think There's that's the, the data in terms, in terms of, um, that's 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 good. I mean, it it it, it kind of confirms what has been said. You know, is that those are man-made devices that are something that you know you've got a group of artists and designers that are doing it, and it's probably it's, it's worldwide, obviously. You know, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, I wonder, I wonder, what is the true purpose of it? Is that what you're saying? You know, I mean. Yeah. Well. I just got that it was just symbolic, but I, but I did towards the end there, I was picking up on something that was had to do with electricity and power generating and things like that. But I mean, I wasn't picking up on stuff that was like, if you want to really analyze this data and like I've, I've tried to do today, um, I do believe that I wasn't picking up on anything that was like, 
you know, a hoax or something like that. But I mean, not to say it's not. I mean, well, what kind of hoax is this? You know what I mean? Um, I, I do believe I was on target with this one. However, it's it's a little confusing as to what this is still um, because it's, it's just something that somebody made and they put it there. But if, if it has a connection to the Georgia Guidestones, I don't think it is directly connected to the Georgia Guidestones, but there's some sort of similarity to it. It is mysterious and it is a pillar, uh, much like these things, you know, but of course, what, what, do you remember what the Georgia Guidestones are representative of, Barry? Honestly, no. I do. I'll tell you what they are. It is, it's like the inverted Ten Commandments, basically. And, and I did have inverted in my data. Um, okay. And so it basically was, it's saying on there, and, and some people do say that the Georgia Guidestones were put there as a, a message to humanity to keep the population down to 500 million. Okay. And to um, be not a cancer on this earth. Okay. And it was kind of like basically taking, culling the population um, only, only like be in harmony with nature and stuff like that. Like I've actually been to the Georgia Guidestones. I was there before they were, I mean, it was the same year that they got destroyed. Uh, I was there about two months before they fell down with my team because uh, we were getting Bigfoot reports at the local park up there at the state park. And I went and spent the weekend up there because uh, it's an area of super high strangeness. Okay. Uh, but it was, it was pretty, it's kind of terrible to be honest with the messages that were on there. Uh, it was not for humanity. It was basically against humanity. It was giving the argument to get rid of like 90% of the population of earth. Hmm. So, and they say and actually, and you, and you got that you got that information from remote viewing those stones. Or? No, it's written on them. It's it's oh, actually okay. written yes. on the stones. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not really familiar with those stones. So that's this is all much new information okay. for me. Well, well, each of the stones has the it's like the ten commandments basically of the uh, let's just say the new world order. I know I, I I'll put this show in rumble in case something happens, y'all. Okay. Um, but it's it's. Uh, okay, it's it's tell it's telling us what to do in case of the apocalypse, basically, how to rebuild Earth. Okay, and on every single side of those stones, it's written in a different language. It's like every single language in the entire world almost is has the list, and it's it's the same list but in different languages on every single side, and at the top, it's even in Sanskrit at the top as well. So. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously they were probably targeted to be destroyed by somebody, or it could, I think it was an inside job, personally. Um, but yeah, because it, it just all this is just happening at the most suspicious times, in my opinion. Um, especially when these monoliths, well, those monoliths started coming up around the same time; those went down. Which is around COVID time. Uh, yeah. Um, you, you know, you know, in all honesty, I think it's more, even more interesting to examine what really a Bracewell probe is and why that was chosen by a 2001 Space Odyssey and maybe some connections of what they're trying to represent that these things are have somehow connected to extraterrestrial civilizations. But in reality, what things do we see that we can look up scientifically that might be real bracewell probes you okay. know and whether that connects to these moths i don't believe so but when looking <laughs> excuse me looking and that takes us into you know near earth objects and you've got a couple of them if i was to say things to look at that could possibly be a bracewell probe, probe that is either a probe coming from another extraterrestrial civilization or somewhere or something that is like a living library that is sent out from here like you know thousands of years ago that's made its rounds and collected information and has come back and appears to be you know it might actually be an artifact that appears to be a near earth object so if i was to tell people in this wonderful audience of yours to look up some of these objects one of them would be sg2000 sg344 that is a near earth object that is very bizarre. Okay. Another one is 1991 
VG. Another one. Another one is 2016 H03. That has been orbiting the Earth for a while. Very odd uh, thing there. Another one is a 1620 geographically kiss. I can't even pronounce it, but you can look that one up. All right. And then another one, of course, is Apophis that they say will probably hit Earth one day. But those are the objects, but especially 2000 SG 344 and 1991 VG. Check those out. And so, so that's just, you know, things we don't hear about a lot, but those are really, but if what, and so it's something like that. And another one, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. The other one, and I think maybe you and I should talk about these some days on a different show, but another one is the Black Knight. And when looking at the Black Knight, that object, my, does it not sound like that same Vanta Black type of material that you were seeing around the uh, pyramid in Alaska, was it? Or was it in Antarctica? I can't remember now, sorry. But, uh, um, the Black Pyramid is in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that where you were seeing, you and I think Tanya mm -hmm. were seeing the Vanta Black yep. type of material on there? That That's I'm a material that we too. can look up, yeah. we can look up now that absorbs, absorbs light in a way that no other material created does. But it's something that you hear that's remnants of what you were seeing on that pyramid and also on the black the black knight. So if we're looking at things that might be connected to bracewell probes, I think we should just throw that in the mix and broaden the topic. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, before we go on, I want to say thank you to Rebecca for that super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, very sweet of you. Um, yeah. Okay. So the well, the second target is let's go to the second one because we still have to talk about Mars. Yeah. Because Mars is the most important, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah um, that, that, that's why I was kind of going there. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Mars, well, let, let's get the whales out of the way. The one in whales. You know, I, I come from a Welsh background. Okay, I know. I, my last name's Jones. I hear everybody in Wales is with Jones, by the way. Okay, so. Uh, but anyways, so, um, so let's get into this one real quick. Because this is uh, about four weeks ago, there was another monolith found in, in Wales. That was that uh, report. I was telling you about that, the, where the, the construction guy was talking about the aliens. They were joking around with the reporter and saying, well, I think it could be alien, right? It just came out of nowhere. And they, were, they, were just, they kept stressing that it was just too, too much to try to lug, lug something up to that hill. You know, you had to hike up there. Okay, so um, on this one, I actually was picking up, okay, on this target, I was picking up on ancient Egypt again because I was seeing an obelisk. I actually wrote down the word obelisk on this one, and uh, and I was picking up on something that some of my sensory data was like high, partial, open, vast, buried. Or I thought something might be buried, uh, but I was picking up on something that looked triangular to me on this one. So it was almost like another, I kind of thought I was looking at a pyramid again, um, but I, I was picking up on, I actually wrote, fake the funk down fake the funk um and uh but i, I did write down obelisk I, I picked up on i was writing down like hieroglyphics because what i what i thought i was looking at was either a pyramid or like an obelisk with like hieroglyphics on it so um but i wrote down town center construction so i was, I was clearly picking up on something that was man-made okay clearly man-made um and uh, and i wrote down construction crew and i wrote down the leaning tower of pisa too so Go ahead. What's question, that? Just a quick question. I wanted to wrap. Just a quick question. Tell um, me. The fake the funk was this. Uh, was that the musical you was getting on this one? <laughs> no. Okay. I didn't get music right. on this one. This I did not get any kind of gangster rap on this one, Barry. I know you love it when I do. <laughs> I did not on this one. Well, I, mean, I mean that is that is that's the best that's the best thing you said there. I, mean, I think that's worth a <laughs> that's worth a thousand words right there. Sorry, what is that, like funkadelic or something? I don't even know. Yeah, but fake the funk. Um, so, but I, I was picking up on something that was like, in a, I was picking up on a pasture. And, but I, but I clearly, okay, just a, in a nutshell, I wrote down man-made and then architecture. So man-made construction. So whatever this was, a person did make it. Now I did not pick up on any kind of actual origin of it other than it was man-made and it was constructed by man. Okay, so it was something that was obviously planned because I wrote down architecture. So I don't know where it came from. I, I don't actually have it. I don't have that. I don't have the answers to that, but I just know that somebody made it according to the data. Okay, who's he? Yeah, so, so anyway, so that's, that's man made. 
It says it all. Okay, so hmm. both of those targets, I would say upon reviewing the data, I would say that they are both man-made. I would think that pretty much all of them are man-made, but like, but why? Why, Barry? It's a good movie. Why? The movie. It's good. good movie. Okay, and maybe it, you know, maybe sometimes it's just to add a little mystery, little mystery to our lives. And I think it's probably worthy looking up really what the symbol, what, what symbol, sim, symbolically they mean as far as if it's Mason or whatever. But really, what do they mean? But um, <clears throat> but just you know that it's just not an extraterrestrial civilization. Now let's go to what probably is. Okay. That's the more exciting Mark. thing to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I okay. Kind of on that for people who don't know about Phobos and what it is. Okay, it let's is. let's talk about that. All right, let me get my notes on this one. Alien monolith found on Mars. All right, so you guys can go Google this or go find an article. Any any, there's all sorts of interviews that the infamous Buzz Aldrin has put out there on C-SPAN and all these like other news channels and stuff, where he clearly states that there is a hundred percent a monolith that was found on Mars. Okay, and um, just just look it up. And I do have some pictures of this, so let's pull this up. So, okay, so this is a side-by-side -side picture. I found this online. I, I took this off some, I don't know where this came from. I just found it online. That's the one in Utah, the one that's man-made, obviously. This is the on the moon, Phobos. Now, Phobos is not Mars, y'all. Okay, so Barry, we need to explain to the audience tonight. Phobos is actually one of the two moons that is, is Mars for Mars. Like Mars, Mars has two moons, mm -hmm. and they're yes. pretty small, actually. Uh, this is what Phobos looks like. Um, now, Buzz Aldrin discloses the existence of the monolith on Mars on its moon Phobos. Around 1877, American astronomer S. F. Hall uh, found a Martian moon. Okay, he found the Martian moon. He actually found two, and he and they were named after the sons of Ares, which would be um, Phobos and Deimos. Now, I got to tell the audience, Phobos means fear, Deimos means panic. Just so you know, and now these moons are not perfect circles like our our moon. Our moon seems to be a perfect circle, but these are like jagged it's like things. asteroids, almost they asteroids. Look like asteroids. They do. Now, now Phobos, this one that I just showed you, is 24. And now I, I know we go by miles, but I just have kilometers here. 24 kilometers um, at the widest point. Deimos is 15 kilometers at the widest point. Now, let's compare that to our moon, the Earth's moon. It's 3,475 kilometers at its widest. So we have a ginormous moon compared to Mars's moons. Okay, those are tiny little moons. Um, but Phobos has grooves on the surface from a colossal impact. And this right here is very interesting. Okay, so this thing is an asteroid lineage. Uh, in 50 million years, it will. they say that it will collide with Mars or it will disintegrate because it, it, it inches up closer and closer to Mars every year. Okay, so... Um, that last picture you just showed that we're going to talk about that well I, i'll tell you before you do immediately what that looks and reminds me of is a book that was made by written by oh gosh i want to say it's raymond bernard i first saw it when i was a kid it was called somebody else is on the moon and it had showed tr what he showed pictures of what like machine tractor tracks and thing machine tracks all over the one part of the moon and one near one of the craters and that they looked similar to that. Sorry, just throw, throw, oh, yeah. throw that out there. That's why I asked that. Oh yeah. Okay. So I thought I, I had a, I had another picture. I guess I I didn't pull it up, but if you look closely uh, at this moon, it looks like it has tracks all over it. But here's the thing: they say that that's from collisions that it's had with other asteroids and stuff. Uh, but it looks like it looks like truck tracks, like vehicle tracks, is what it looks like. Um, now, okay, so. At some point, a satellite was sent to go take pictures of Mars by NASA. Okay, I believe it was NASA. In 2021, an anomaly was found, was spotted there. That is what this picture is right here. They say it's a half of a buried disk. And some, and it's about 12 to 15 um, meters in diameter. 
And they say, some people say this is the UFO crash, Barry. So there's also talk of there being ancient civilizations on Mars, of course, and potentially even on this, this moon. Okay. Um, they're talking about having pyramids on there. Uh, I think they were called the Sidonians from what I was reading. The Sidonians live there. Okay. Is so the Sidonia complex. That's, that's, a Cydo that's a Sidonia complex on Mars. Okay. In fact, in fact, I just did a book or a video over the Olmex and the Mars connection. And I talk about a book that is called the Mars Sidonia Codex. It's a great okay. book that shows the actual similarities between the face of Mars, not just Olmex, but um, does, I'll throw that in more, but also um, the temples in Belize that were Mayan temples and things like the Jaguar mask and the Venus mask and how they have similarities connected with the um, Sidonia complex, which is where the face is and all those pyramids are in that area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I mean, th there's definitely life on other planets. Okay. We have already established this and, uh, yeah, this, this data is interesting, Barry. Okay. So maybe we should just get into this data because, uh, this is, this is another one that, okay. Usually, usually if I get a target that is like off planet. Okay. So like, I kind of forget to tell the people who are going to task me with these things. Like, I, I don't even know if I've told you this, but usually like I, I change up the numbering. And so like, I, I don't, I usually do more numbers than just eight, but I forgot. Okay. So I forgot about this. So, uh, so that I know that it's an off planet target. Okay. So sometimes we'll know that it's an off planet target by the numbers that we get. Uh, okay. But this just had regular numbers on it. So, um, so I had no idea, which is totally fine. Totally cool. But um, let's get into this one. Okay. So this target is, let's see if I got the prompt. Okay. Eh, all right. Well, it's the, uh, it's, it's the metal, this the monolith, not metal. It's the monolith on Mars moon, Probos. Okay, that's the target. Um, okay, so for this, on, on the sensory data for this target, uh, I was picking up something that was, I was picking up a building or building, like something that was being built, much like those other two targets. It's kind of similar data, actually. But I picked up on a building, um, something that was ancient, um, I was picking up on something that was, I wrote down amazing, amazing in receiving. I started picking up on a lot of data that had to do with receptors or receiving. I wrote down black, dark, metallic, and lost. So with the analytic overlay data, Barry, this is going to, this might trip you out a little bit. I was picking on something that was far out, far away, construction built, a solid structure, I started picking up on walkie talkies. Okay, I wrote down walkie talkie, receiver, receiving data, data, and I heard data rates may apply. Okay, so I actually, for my drawing, I actually draw, drew what looks like a cell phone or a phone, a telephone or something. Uh, and, I, and I wrote, I wrote down the word phone. <clears throat> and then I, I heard ET phone home. E.T. phone home. I was I was like picking up data from the movie E.T. OK, so E.T. phone home. And then I wrote down lost communication and left behind. OK, and uh, and that's that's the gist of that data right there. OK. But what does that tell you, Barry? This is a, this is super interesting, right? A communication system that's probably still functioning from a destroyed civilization. Exactly. That's what it says to me. And you know, when, yeah. when when looking at that Mars Phobos monolith, doesn't it really look more like a cube to you? Well, that picture, not that picture, but the other pictures I've seen, it looks almost more cubic to me. Interesting. And it when does. and when dealing with that, that takes us into the cubes, not just the ones that can be on craft and stuff, but also the cube that you looked at that was a blind target for the sun around the Soho that the Soho satellite had seen. I'm sure everybody remembers that one. But that was fascinating to me because the things you first started picking up was a type of advanced AI. Mm -hmm. And whatever type of AI this is, is producing ships that are the size of Jupiter, that are legion ships and things of that nature, cubicle. And they're using the portals of the sun as uh, their power source and AKA travel source. That's uh, 
that's heavy. So I can't help but think mm-hmm. about that when I look at this Mars monolith thing and okay. make a possible connection there. It's food for thought again, you know. Well, I want to show the audience the picture that I drew for my stage three data on this one because to me it looked like a cell phone, right? However, it looks it could be a monolith of some sort. Okay. That's it to me it looked like a little handheld cell phone, but that's not that doesn't mean that's what it is. Uh it looks like a mon like a monolith, I guess. I don't know. It's up for debate. I mean, it's it's remote viewing data, you know what I mean? So I don't have all the answers here. But I do have I do have whatever came through, you know, whatever information I I channeled through uh, for that target. So you and know, I got really to see Oh no, sorry. Yeah. Um, that's really interesting because, you know, if you think of something like we have, like the SETI project, or what I talked about before, the OSETI project, Optical Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, nobody talks about that. And that's really where it's to look at for radio signal or not radio signals that scintillate, but actually lasers and things that are taking us to another level when looking for extraterrestrial civilizations. So when what something like that, what would happen if there's destruction? You know, and what would happen to those type of devices if they're way more advanced? Is that what we're seeing? Is that some type of device that's similar to like a SETI type of project for intergalactic communication? You know, we never think what actually technology is used for intergalactic, like like Star Trek calls it subspace and stuff like that. But really, what would be used for intergalactic communications in a way like that and interdimensional on top of that? That's what you're kind of describing, walkie-talkies and that. It's quite interesting, you know? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I 100% picked up on communications device of some sort. And a, a trans, a, a receiver, it wasn't just like a transmitter. It was a receiver. Like, it's it's bringing in information, okay? Like, it's receiving the information. So, I mean, maybe that's something. I mean, isn't that like why probes are sent out? They have to have something that receives information that the probes are sending out, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, that, that, that's interesting, you know, and receiving information from where, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> where and when it's, it's quite interesting. And well, how many of those <laughs> things are here on earth, real ones like that? I don't think it's the little things we're seeing the, the man, you know, okay. it's going to be something else. Well, here, here's my question. Okay, so like I've so two of those were remote viewing targets. So two of those structures here on Earth. What if there's like some real ones that are actually we're put here by aliens that I just didn't remote view those. You know, I don't know. Possible. Could well, you be. Think you've got a lot of you've got a lot of objects and things here on Earth that are not of terrestrial origin. You know, and then again, I'll repeat again since we're talking about Mars and something that's outside Earth's atmosphere. Look at those objects I mentioned again, 2000 SG344 and VG1991, HO2, 2016 HO3, and also 1620 Geographicus or whatever. And just look at those when they're orbiting around Earth. And if those are things that are from past Earth civilization, like Bracewell probes or something that we made that's still out there orbiting the planet, they're calling AKA near earth objects and things like that. Another one, you know, and this takes us into why I also watch, and we talked about this on the hail bot thing, but why I watch some of the comments that come in here and objects like Amua Amua, that they could be some of these probes that are coming back to earth, you know, and reporting like after we've already had that civilization long existed, exterminated here, maybe two cycles ago, who knows? But that stuff would be coming back, and I think we need to be aware of that and be prepared for that. And but we wouldn't hear about it. So you know, and right now, things like um, the Bennu asteroid, Bennu spacecraft went out and took pieces of that asteroid, and they come back and dropped it here. Why are they not going mm-hmm. and looking at those near Earth objects? Well, yeah, good question. That's a good question. Okay, well, well, I was actually okay. So I started looking into obelisks. Okay, because we all. Everybody here has seen an obelisk, I'm sure. Everyone who's listening in, everybody who's in the chat tonight. I mean, we have obelisk in cemeteries, right? I mean, I go out in the local cemeteries here in Georgia. There's a, an obelisk in almost every one of the old cemeteries uh, on top of like, 
what is that for? Like, what, what exactly are obelisks? What is their purpose? Okay, but they're all over the world now. Some people say those are cosmic antennas. Cosmic antennas, and a lot of them are made up of quartz. They're made out of marble and stuff, right? So um, could that be some kind of ancient global network of communication? I mean, uh, if we have obelisk in the town halls and a lot, you know, the, the city halls, the town squares of a lot of small towns around the United States and probably all over the world. There's a gigantic obelisk in the state of the nation's capital. There's a giant obelisk at the Vatican. There's giant obelisks all over the place. And I know it does represent the male phallus and stuff. I've heard that. Okay. Um, but it but it also could be a communications device. Uh, and maybe, maybe that's how they're transmitting up to Mars. And Mars is receiving the information from here down on Earth. It, I may be stretching it or reaching, but I don't know. I mean, why, <laughs> why not? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, that's what we do no, here, though, no. right? We think out, we think outside the box, and we try I, to I, make some connections. You know, when looking at things again like that, Sidonia <laughs> Codex book, there's another one, the Mars Codex. Those gentlemen wrote too, and some of those things that are found in the Mayan temples. And what structures are they? Look at those and stuff like that and kind of make that correlation there. You know what I mean? What connection was it that the Olmecs and the Mayans had with Mars? And the Olmecs, hell, excuse me, heck, sorry, heck. Um, look at those, uh, look, look at the face of Mars. It looks just like an Olmec a head that has the helmet on it. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, kind of, right. right there in front of you. Talking about disclosures, a lot of this stuff is like right in front of us. You know what I mean? So well, um, speaking, but, uh, speaking of the Mayans, um, the, the Mayans, the Mayans. No, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. But the, the Mayans about? had they had pyramids too, right? The Mayans, the Aztecs, the Incas, they they had yeah. pyramids. I mean, what if what if this is some kind of galactic communications device? And that's just right. they're communicating with other planets on other even other galaxies. I don't know. I don't know exactly. how this stuff works. And something else I want to throw out too for people to look at, and it's a book they can get. I first I read this in the '90s. All right, it's how I got hip to this gentleman's work. David Hatcher Childress wrote wrote a book called um, Extraterrestrial Archaeology, and on that he talks about some of the pictures that were taken from. You know, there were two Voyager probes, but also long before that, there were the Pioneer probes, and a lot of them took pictures of some of these moons and stuff. And he's describing these different structures on some of these moons that we're seeing, like the farther ones out. Um, if I want to say Europa, the moon's there, maybe Neptune. I can't remember now, but that book, anyway, just look that up. And that gentleman, he was speaking and uh, when I was in Vegas at that conference. I met so many people there, but I didn't get to talk to him. Just it didn't cross. But interesting, interesting dude with good work that goes predating the Ancient Aliens TV show. So when thinking about that and how many of these other structures in this solar system there are it's pretty pretty interesting and mind-blowing and from the blind targets i had given you on the third and fourth um trans neptunian objects in the kuiper belt outside of pluto mm -hmm. there you saw the bases there and i gave you those to see if that's what you saw when you remote viewed them as blind targets i was informed of that in what my contact experiences so you know that's you know, good food for thought this all is yeah yeah i like i look what maureen says she says obelisk are cell towers for mars maybe maybe so i mean i i think that there, there's just a bigger picture to all of this i guess and uh i mean I, there's so much of our history and so much of the stuff that's either hidden from us or it's been erased that we don't know like i've always wanted to know like why maybe that's a freemason thing like i did have the free and i know it's a touchy subject right but i did have freemasons in that first target so maybe it's like hidden hidden secret knowledge or something why are there obelisks all over the place what's the real meaning does it have something to do with energy free energy i don't know you know i hope hopefully all this information will come to light you know maybe maybe we're bringing it to the light i don't know um but it's, it's just interesting to know because there's also obelisks there and okay and you gotta also think about this barry so the whole Apollo 11 moon landing thing, I know it's touchy, 
But Buzz Aldrin, when I, okay, so when I was researching for the show, after I had remote viewed that, before I was told to not talk about it, okay, there's all these pictures of him with his hand over his eye doing the, 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 that symbol right there. Okay. Where it's like, you know, y'all, everybody knows what that is. Secret society kind of stuff. So I don't know. I just think it's connected. You know, when talking about talking about him, and you notice how all those astronauts seem to not quite be right when they come back. Yeah. But there's one that was very interesting, and that's Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Mitchell is the reason why the free organization, CCRI, that's done all that survey over real contactees exists. Now, what's very interesting about him, he wrote a book over the moon and um, ESP is what I think he titled it. I, God, I've got it in my files here. But um, in there, Jessica, what he talked about is how they were trained to remote view before they went to the moon. Exactly. And to remote view the moon and all those things out there when they got there too. Yeah. And the stuff they were seeing and got, he, he was talking about that. And he started something called uh, Quantrek. And in Quantrek, he was doing some type of a system teaching people how to view and um, incorporating this stuff and talking about it. And when something that was very interesting when I heard him talking and he talked about what he called the barbecue effect and the barbecue effect that he's referring to is when the shuttle, the, 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 the pod comes back, it, it turns to stop it from burning. You know what I'm talking about? And so yeah. he described as being on a, like a, on a rotisserie, all right. And how it turns. And he said, he's looking out, he looked out the window and saw all the stars that, that like, there's no space between them and they started swirling. And when they started swirling, he had some type of ecstasy experience where he mm -hmm. felt like every one of these stars and lights was connected to an individual cell in his body or molecule in his body. Pretty heavy experience he described there. You know what I mean? So these are things that we don't hear those astronauts talking about, let alone the real stuff they saw out there, you know, just, it's, I know. It's a, let alone what they really experienced consciously. Cause this, this is a conscious thing going on all this. Yeah. You know? It is. And that's why I think that remote viewing is so important. Okay. Even the astronauts are taught to remote view. Okay. And I know and I always say, I'm like, all right, everybody that's attacked me for being a remote viewer, they have no, I mean, I, it's, it's used more often than you'd ever imagine. Okay. And especially some, some big things like going to the moon, allegedly, I think they went to the moon, but well, I just yeah, don't think they yeah. got. I just don't think they got there the way they we were told. Okay. Well, 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 well you know, then you then you get things like that that video of that gentleman that looks like Stanley Kubik. It's oh. not. It's somebody from one of those those acting deals, and he's. It looks like right. it's back in the sixties. He's saying, "Oh, it's all fake. The moon deal." And because two thousand one came out a few years, like what a year before the moon landing, everybody was saying it was just put together. And what we're seeing is cut from that. And how much of that might or might not be true. Regardless, they have been to the moon uh, several different ways, and we know that they're not really invited to go back that much, are they? No. Um, you know, when dealing with Ingo Swan's book, that penitentiary, or sorry, penitentiary, penetration. Penetration, sorry. <laughs> penitentiary, I was talking about Leon Isaac Kennedy today, sorry. Um, yeah, when o, sure. you know, O.J. Simpson died today, so everybody's been talking about that. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, penitentiary, or pen Penetration by Ingo Swan. He talks about the woman in the mall or in the, in the store. If you remember that part of that book, mm -hmm. very very interesting, and how the men in black were watching him and her, and one of them grabbed him later and said, "What do you know about her?" And he said, well, "You need to know that she's extremely dangerous." And the way he describes watching this woman going through whatever she was getting at the store, and he knew she was an extraterrestrial, and how he's putting that a connection with. Who's on the moon? I guess we're not supposed to be talking about that, but that whole book is about the moon, really. Yeah, the it quest, is. The quest for human extraterrestrial telepathy. That's yeah, interesting. Okay, so it's really interesting that he's brought up again because here we go with the 2001 Space Odyssey, right? I mean, he's he's brought up in a, some of these articles. If you go read about these metal monoliths that we're talking about tonight, his name gets brought up a lot. Okay, in those articles, so uh, he plays he plays a he plays a role in whatever we're talking about tonight. Um, you, you, know, you know what's interesting? I, my favorite movie, probably of all times, it'll show my age. I like some of the eighties flicks. My favorite movie was called Dreamscape, with Dennis Quaid and Max von Sydow 
from my generation, probably most known for playing Ming on Flash Gordon, another cheese okay. 80s, 70s movie, actually. But seriously, um, in that movie, it deals with Max von Saito is a doctor that is studying um, paranormal and psychics and everything, and he's been doing it for years. And it shows him actually testing Dennis Quaid and other psychics to see who was eligible to actually do invade the dreamscape on someone else. And, but in reality, Ingo Swan was like Max von Sydow. He was doing those experiments on other psychics. I mean, that book's all in that penitentiary, penetration book, penetration. which coincidentally, when after my accident, that book was going for 450 on Amazon before he died. I think it's much more affordable now. Oh, you can get it on the Amazon now. Yeah, you yeah. can get it on Amazon. I've got, we've got it. It's, it's not here. hundreds of dollars now. That's a trip. No. It wasn't. Well, I tell you, I swear, I to, where I went to Barnes and Noble, I had the guy look it up. He's going, what is in this book? Because I'm going to make sure I was getting it right. It's a 400 and something. It's like yeah. a reused copy. That's all before he died, though. So. Yeah. Well, that's important. It's important information. I mean, and that's the only target I've ever been. I'm not going to, I wasn't threatened over it or anything, but it was kind of like I was warned. I had a gentle reminder uh, on that one. So, yeah. I mean, this is this is important stuff. So we're just making connections tonight, y'all. And I know this is for entertainment purposes only, because I do have to always uh, remind everybody. It is now. Luana has an interesting um, statement here in a, a question. Uh, she said, "Has anyone else asked if do you think the monoliths might have a tie-in with CERN as it's powering it, or perhaps receiving information from other dimensions or frequencies?" That's interesting. What do you think, Barry? Because, you know, they just turned CERN back on, what was that, Wednesday? That was yesterday. Uh, they they question, fired it but, back up. You know, but I want to say something, though. When this, again, I mentioned this a lot. People are really focused on CERN now. And, mm -hmm. again, no one even really heard of CERN until John Teeter made a comment when that whole thing started. But in reality, looking at this and these other type of cyclotrons is what they used to call these things um they have other ones that have been in operation for a very long time since the 60s one would be the cosmotron c-o-s-m-o-t-r-o-n please look that up another one is fermilab fermilab is, has had a cyclotron moving a large one collider going for a long time and cern too and you know and that i never heard about cern i heard about the other two but that was until the late 90s when um, that Art Bell actually started talking about John Teeter and then uh, went, looked at the website, the guy just popped up on a website and said he was from the future, the year 2036. He showed pictures of this time machine he had in a Corvette. And scientifically looking, it's quite interesting. Okay. And um, he was saying that he was uh, came from the future and that there was a company called CERN that would inadvertently discover time travel. And then they would start making models behind that. And he presented a patent, a future patent for the, the time device he had. I've got a video I put out. Well, actually it's on Patreon, but I'm thinking about releasing it because spirits been pushing me, so I'll do it. But anyway, just food for thought on all this, you know, like you said, uh, for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I but I mean, it's interesting how this kind of ties together, you know, and I've always been fascinated by those who, say they're time travelers you know art yeah. bell back in the 90s again he would open up the coast to coast am uh open lines like once or twice a year for real time traveler calls and some of the ones he got on there i think i've sent some of you i have on 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 patreon but it's yeah. very interesting a few of those you, know, you get the kooks that would call in but you had a few that would call in that were just as believable as what john teeter was saying one guy that called in two different times he did it and say, well, I'm still, it's just for me, it's just been a few minutes. But for you, it's been probably a year and something. Very fascinating when he starts describing the technology he used to get here and some of the things from the timeline he came through. It's fascinating. You know, one person called in, this is in the 90s, and said, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're have a black president in the timeline I come from. And our bell's like, oh, I don't think so. That's not going to much, much chance of that. There's much chance there'll be a woman president. It's, that's probably not going to happen. He said, no, the time when I come from, there'll be a black president. Yeah. So just food for thought again. That's back in the 90s. So, you know. <laughs> I, there's there's time travel going on. I have no doubt with all the projects. I mean, even our government's worked on with Project Pegasus. We got Phoenix Project. We got all these projects with like secret space program and things like that. Now, Robin has a good 
a good point here. Okay. And I, I have heard this, I have heard something very similar. Uh, I, I can't say for a fact, but I do, I have heard this. Um, rumors that all universities have a CERN, which is a, a hydrogen collider or a large hydrogen collider um, apparatus somewhere on their property. Okay. And uh, I, I can think of like three or four places that I've been told do have hadron colliders on These the property. Companies and little offshoots. I've, I've heard well, they, well, they work in conjunction with CERN actually on different projects. Like there's one in New York, there's one in Tennessee, there's pro potentially one in Georgia for sure. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I'm saying I've heard that for sure. So, um, but yeah, it, the ones that I know of are all on the East Coast. I haven't heard of any on the West Coast, which is odd. Um, but I have heard of some of, on there's, the. There's a lot in other countries, a lot of them in other countries. Yeah. And when you start looking at the Cosmotron and things, you're like, well, they've been building these since the 60s yeah. and running these things. It's really pretty much um, terrifying because I think Fermilab has a whole bunch of them now, too. Not yeah. just, yeah. So, so. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt DeVille. Somebody must have asked, what are we talking about here? Um, okay, so yeah, this is interesting because I talked with uh, with Dennis. Carol, Dennis. Dennis is in the chat. Hey, Dennis. We talked about this yesterday with, well, we were, we were talking about a whole bunch of stuff, but we were talking about the anniversary of, I think it was in 1904, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have my notes here, but in 1904, Aleister Crowley started channeling Iweiss or a Weiss is the name of what he called Satan. It was like a little, and it looks like an alien. That's why <laughs> where people get, people get like the alien versus demon, you know, versus, versus the cabbage goes. head. Uh, ca cabbage head uh, yes. yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. So, well, they were, well, all this stuff was kind of aligning. So it's interesting that um, Lawanda brought up the CERN. It says the anniversary. Yesterday was the anniversary of, um, him starting that three-day channeling of Aweiss, who was this the the machine demon. It was like a, basically like a demon, I guess is what he called him, Satan or Lucifer. Um, but they turned on. Okay, so CERN made an announcement. There's an actual announcement, a report where they say that there is a phantom entity living in their machine. Or that came out of their machine. I think they said in their machine. Send, send me a link of that. I like to. I like to read. I that. mean, I will gladly. Saying, I like to read. Yeah, that. I'll gladly you know, say that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, um, you know, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no, I just saw that Arkeem's in here. What's up? What's up, Arkeem? Oh my gosh! Thank you for being here tonight. Um. Yeah. Hey, Arkeem was part of projects where uh, they would that involved time travel and portals and stuff like that so uh it's absolutely it's absolutely a real thing for sure uh, but it's just interesting that this is okay so they, they said they turned on cern yesterday fired it back up on the anniversary of when he channeled this entity named a weiss uh on while they're saying that they have their own phantom entity i mean it sounds like a dark entity why why would they want to crank all this up right now we got all this stuff going down uh, they want to they want to bring some dark entities out into the world, I guess. But uh, but it's also you know, fear. You know, you know, fear that, those projects actually. You know, I don't hear people talking about enough that really the exotic particles that they yeah. create in those colliders and cyclotrons for just um, you know less than less than a millisecond. But that's yeah. what they're looking for is all these not just the hogs bison they're looking for and how many they found that are exotic par particles we never hear about. Ones that really will be things taking us to type one civilization and beyond. That's the problem. We hear still we hear these things. Oh, they create a whole portal that's to consume the world and all this and that. And we really have to be aware of where the energy comes from and where it's processed. It does just come from nowhere and how much energy it is that would take to actually engulf this entire planet in a black hole. It needs to really be taken into account. And and is that kind of the power they have there? I tell you right now, ask a physicist. No, it's not. But anyway, <laughs> no, never mind real science. Let's stay on fantasy. That's fun. Fair. <laughs> well, okay. well, some people say, I mean, there's there's a video of a young boy who claims that the earth was destroyed. Our reality, this dimension, the dimension that we were living in was destroyed in 2012. And that we hopped over to a new dimension because we all basically we all died. 
back then. And I know, I know you're over there rubbing your head. <laughs> no, I'm just listening. I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. You know, technically, well, if you said, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, there's multiple timelines that we are, were destroyed and there's no yeah. doubt. I've said this before, so I don't want to sound like this broken, broke, broke, broken record, but you know, it, it we have during these solar cycles is the time that we have these time edits and that it keeps coming up again and again. One of these time edits is nuclear war. It keeps yeah. coming up again and again and are, are being destroyed in a nuclear war. You've got to the point you've already had them exploding atomic bombs based on the hydrogen molecule, which rips dimensions. We don't really know how many. It's like all of a sudden you got Australia over there. It just blows up. And it's not even on your planet from from your dimension, your planet. It's another dimension that they're doing something that's ripping other dimension and blowing up. So what happens? You start shoot, shooting, uh, sending Foo Fighters to investigate this other dimensions coming through. And then the things that come through these rips, they create through these bombs. You know, I've heard long ago that some mos monstrosity things came through some of these rips from these bombs based on hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And that they're still on this planet now, you know, then we start takes us into things like revelations and the beasts and all this and that. But nonetheless, there is some type of a reality there. And so the whole doomsday scenario, they're trying to push us to a to a timeline like that. It's very possible. You know, I'm sorry. But we brought up this last time. God, I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I don't care. I'm, 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 I'm through washing stuff over this cat right here, man. This stuff right here. Ed Dames, I'm sorry, everything we've done so far, the work that we you know, have done is showing that this stuff, a lot of what he's talking about is trying to push us to a bad timeline. I'm sorry, it's, it is what it is. The data speaks for itself. It's not me being a, 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 a biggest towards his work or anything, but it, it concerns me. You know, not just that we're in some type of a quickening, but right now is a time where I think we're given the opportunity to save ourselves. You have these faster vibrations, people incarnating, people that aren't so white clean. You know, whatever happens when we die, we go to, as Ray Hernandez calls it here, the mind of God. And then we kind of give our suppository, uh, it's a suppository, we give our life experiences. Then we get wiped clean and come to go learn the next time we don't learn nothing. And it's not the devilish evil thing that we think it is because we come here, this place is all messed up. You know, it, it's it's really, you know, nothing says we, we're it's not toward, told anything. It's very contrived and no, that's why it was, it's a bunch of secret knowledge and stuff. Um, I don't know. We're just, we're, we're uncovering a couple of things here. Yes. Yeah, stay with the light friends. Absolutely. Robin. I agree with that. You know, um, by the way, she's the one that makes those great pictures. Her pictures are yeah. almost as cool as the ones I find. No, I'm just kidding. She's yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, but um, uh, yeah. you know, when dealing with like what Tesla and everybody's talking about this, wireless transmission wireless energy energy but this is wireless you know communication not not to be a super geek but you know i i enjoy when i black in the early 2000s i was a smallville fan especially the first <laughs> two seasons the three seasons i thought it was really good and now you've got the guy that played lex and clark doing a show called talkville where they just go over all the episodes what they can remember they're like my age uh hell rosenbaum's two years younger older than me i think Anyway, so they, they go, they're going over this stuff, and I was went back and watched one of the episodes, and I, it hit me. I was watching it, and the, the ladies and the, the girls in the, in, the, in the gym doing the computer, and Clark speeds in there, Chloe, how'd you get, how'd you get internet in the, in the gym? And she looks at him, oh, I snagged a telephone line. And that's when I was like, whoa, pre-Wi-Fi. Oh. And wireless communications and how far we go, and what you're talking about and what you, your data is showing – is a much more advanced intergalactic type of machinery that's doing that. I think that's that's heavy and that's cool. And I think that's something really valuable out of that data. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean you know we talk we talk about cell phones and how they're using the gray overlay you and I have talked about and how that communication goes through the cell phone networks and how they're using that as some that's talk about invasion. That's the way that stuff is happening. You know what I mean? Embedded beings coming through this, 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 these cell towers and stuff. We're dealing with that type of a system, but far more advanced. Yeah. Again, food for thought. Oh, yeah. That great overlay that you've talked about and you have the videos on. 
where the MRI machines, the cell phones. I mean, we we even heard um, Sherry Divaband at the at the conference we were at last year. She was talking about demons coming through the television and stuff like a, it's like a portal so i mean it is it's like elect electric electronics and stuff i mean i was picking up on a, electronic data and stuff and on these targets the series they got the series um presentation i bet you a lot of, a lot of people went up in their hotel rooms and put their tv down yeah I think most of us did. Yeah, we put a, a towel over the television. Yeah, because it, it, it does make you wonder. It makes you think. Well, I can say one thing, and I can only confirm for myself, and now having a platform to talk to so many others, myself, especially in childhood, man, bombarded, bombarded psychically a lot to a point where I couldn't sleep. And sometimes if I would turn the TV on, even if it was on silent, it would shut things off enough I could go to sleep. So it wasn't that I was getting invaded by demons out there, but it was shutting the other stuff off enough to where it wasn't getting invaded. And I found later when I started researching that, how many people in childhood actually need that to turn the TV on, even if it's just silent, so it allows them to sleep. That happens to some of us that are really, you know, mediums too, it makes a yeah. difference. Well, you know, last night, so we had horrible storms that ripped through Georgia yesterday and so last night so our power was out all night and uh, I don't know it came on before the more before the sun came up this morning but then the power was out again today and so we um so but I, I slept really good last night you know the wi-fi was off like the cell phones were everything was off my cell was on probably but uh but everything was pretty much off uh there was there was none of the interference I guess you could say uh, electronic interference was all off last night and uh, and I think that we slept a lot better last night as a whole personally yeah we're not we're not having so much electromagnetic frequencies around you yeah, yeah. you know and I, I've mentioned that before I don't want to go into too much the MRI stuff you know and that that's something I have an opportunity to talk to a couple of operators about and the different entities that seem to come through and manifest through that electromagnetic frequency and grid those machines cause i mean it's only natural if you think about it really but um yeah. you know as they, they told me said well the ones around the x-ray machines seem like they're more shadows they're quicker but said but the ones around the mr machine they like follow you home and they generate nightmares two, two, two techs telling me that yeah and they said i prefer i prefer working on just x-rays now the x-ray machine is not nearly as as bad but i think that's why the x-ray the, the mri machine was in a in a um, closed part of the hospital down in the basement, I think it was to keep it away because it has all that stuff around it. Oh, interesting. Well, okay, okay, I got to address this real quick because Andrew from uh, Andrew Gnomes and Trucking Express, Cartersville, Georgia, is not too far from where I live, and that is where the Etowah Indian Mounds are. So if you're still there, I doubt you're still there. But if you do pass back through there, go by the Etowah Indian Mounds in Cartersville. And uh, and I talk about those a lot. I believe I believe there were giants there, personally. Uh, we also yeah. have dog, dog man reports in that area, too. Uh, Ten miles down the road is where we have the, the dog man and the werewolf reports uh, in I, that area. I got to ask. You know? I got to ask. Okay. I got to ask. Is that close? To Cobb County, <laughs> <laughs> big boss it's, man. Yeah, I had yeah. To ask. <laughs> it is. It's very close, actually. It's not far at all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's super, oh, super close. So, but yeah, if you're if you're in Cartersville, go and go to the Telus Museum as well. They have a great museum there in Cartersville. So, yeah, that's my those are my stomping grounds. I know all about you that know, area. You know, those 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 mounds are interesting because I wonder often what, like, just for what race were the giants that were in those mounds? Were they Native American? Were they, what were they? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very, were they redheads? What, what were they? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> I know here's some, some of the things you hear about some of the ones that have been ex excavated from there. It's really well, interesting. And well, any time that I'm history in so much longer. Well, it's interesting because whenever I've I've done remote viewing targets of the the giants that are found, like at Lovelock or the even the Afghanistan giant, they have like Nordic bloodlines or something. It seems like there's always some kind of Viking data or Nordic data 
So I don't know, but yeah. we're told that there, if there were giant skeletons, they came out of Indian mounds, so they're Native Americans. That's what we're told. Well, a question. I so oh. when I gave you the blind target of the pyramids, it was the construction of the Great Pyramid and the pyramid, yeah, the Great Pyramid specifically. What did you see? What kind of giants was you saw there? You know, just looking at. I don't remember. I just remember giants and like ETs, kind of. It was like ET extraterrestrial type data. Uh huh. It was yeah. giant. Yeah, you saw giants, and then you saw undeniably advanced sound technology. You were describing sound devices. And you still didn't know what it was. I wouldn't tell you for a long time. Really. More, more, tell me more. Either. I was like, that's why are like, we tell me what this target is? I know that's, I, I kept going back in, but we got so much good data out of that. So we were, we squeezed the blood out of the turnip on that one. <laughs> that's cool. You know, I, I, somebody had mentioned to me, they said, man, when I started looking up the, the episodes you guys have done for remote viewing, there's so many of them. And, you know, I think you and I are both kind of unaware of how many of them there's, there's been. So I looked, started looking, I said, wow, a couple of them, even I forgot. I got a pretty good memory. Not bad. But. Yeah, we have done a lot. It's, I I haven't even take, I haven't had a chance to sit down and actually take it all in. I do have like folders of all the targets and it takes up an entire gigantic, huge box. So uh, there's a lot. It's a lot. Well, and in addition to all the ones that I do, there's not just you and I. I mean, I've been I've been remote viewing for 12, 12 years now or something. And so I have a lot of practice targets and active targets and high priority targets. And I keep everything. I'm, I've I have I have all of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. it's that's cool. That's cool. It's pretty yeah, awesome. Good, good, good work. Good work. I think it's Thank important because I think that's the next stage. I think that's how you got a lot more communication going on. Again, galactic, extra galactic. That's yeah. that's the new that's the new way, the 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 remote viewing highway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better than the ET ET highway, right? Another good book. Yeah. <laughs> we lit a candle. Uh, you know, you know when, when look when looking at the Nephilim, interesting comment. You know, and really what they were. You know, I hear so many people want to say, well, they're actually Bigfoot. They're this. They're that. But you know, it's fascinating when you start looking in the fossil, not the fossil record, but the, the, the legend. And when dealing with some of those giants and different types of giant that were here, from the Cyclops all the way to these other creatures that were supposedly these, which would be ancient aliens come down here that were biologically compatible to us, with us to a certain degree, you know, and you hear the, about these giants a lot and they just come up a lot. And, you know, and to me, when I hear the story of, uh, who was it, David and the Goliath? Yeah. The last one of those giants coming down, messing with people. Dude told him to go on somewhere, and he didn't. What happened? Pow! Well, took him out, man. You know, but, I mean, ultimately, I think Goliath is a good, big represent, representation of that. And we don't even hear about the brothers I talked about that come from Triangulum. They were melanin dominant. They were huge. There were some of these beings they talk about, like, in the Indian um, scripts. They got to, like, 25 feet tall. And so things like Lord Hanuman that was actually more of a monkey type of mm -hmm. God. And they've got those huge footprints, supposedly for him jumping from mountain to mountain. Very fascinating stories behind that. And you start hearing about mm -hmm. things called the Venara. And the Venara are a type of not quite Sasquatch, but monkey men that were make that come around at night and would worship these giant foots, these giant Lord Hanneman foots. You know, that, that brother, what's his name? Um, Morheen, Morheen Proheen, oh gosh. He's pretty heavy. He talks about some of that stuff, too. I mean, it, it gets pretty heavy when you start dealing with some of those ancient Indian temples. Yeah. He goes to all of them. Yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, Judah Kola in Tsukalu. Uh, he jumped from mountain to mountain, too, much like Lord Hanneman as well. And that was in North Carolina, up in uh, near Cashers, kind of. Um, now I do, I, we have a really interesting question. I see Andrew's left a couple of really good questions in here and I wanted to address this. Uh, has remote viewing changed from how it was done and how it worked back when Ingo Swan first started? Actually, I used, I was trained in the Ingo Swan methods and it is exactly the same now as it was back then. So it's, it's the same. Uh, as far as I know, it hasn't changed. I mean, I, I haven't changed up anything I do. And he's who taught Ed Dames. I know that. Mm -hmm. Ed's Dave said that before. That's who taught him. Yeah. It's, it's pretty much the way the military was trained. 
Okay. And, uh, and there's another question that he asked too. Have you, have I noticed a different experience 12 years ago than what you experience now regarding remote viewing and data? No, it's, it's the same. It's the same. Uh, I have, I'm just better at doing it now. It flows a lot easier now than it did back then. I think it flowed easy back then, but like once you do so many targets, like you're not good at remote viewing until you hit at least, at least a hundred targets. Okay. At least. And I've done well over that, well over that. So it just, it flows easier and you, you gotta, you gotta just get out of your head and not think about stuff. And I've, I've been able to do that years and years later. So yeah, um, that's right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a science and you go and you pretty much go by the, the rules of it, you know? So I saw something in the chat. Somebody said they're, it just passed by, but somebody said they're melanin impaired. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. <laughs> That's a good sense of humor. I like that. Sorry. That just caught me. That's why I try to look over there. I start laughing because people crack jokes over there a lot, man. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Well, well, do we have any final thoughts tonight, Barry, on the metal monoliths all over the world and the one on Mars? Because uh, we did we did come to the conclusion through the data that they apparently look like they're man-made and some people are just putting them all over the world. We don't know why exactly, but some of us kind of emulating the one that's in Mar on Mars. Can almost just call it art and surmise it as art. I mean, it, it's, I know that's a general statement, but it seems that, and people are, but what it's taken us into is much broader, which is what is that on Mars? What are the things in Hatcher Childress's extraterrestrial archaeology book? What are these these other cubes and monoliths that are ex, extra, extra Earth, outside of Earth? I think it kind of takes us into that a little bit more, all the way into what you were seeing around the sun, that large yeah. cube. I mean, it's very interesting when you start unraveling some of the stuff and how it kind of connects some of it and goes deep. Because somebody that gave you that target, sometimes I get more of what I bargained for. I think so, it's <laughs> going to be like this, and it don't be. You know what I mean? Like right there, you look at that cube. I was like, man, probably the life forms on there, like something like that. But I didn't think it would be all AI. Like so much of a structure, you can tell what was in there. I remember it was like, I mean, even beyond like if we saw a board cube, you can at least see the technology and the humanoids kind of or something. That's not what you were seeing. You were seeing pure tech, you know, and that then the size of that thing and the civilization that would that made it, the prime intelligence that made it, that's what I want to know about. We never hear about the prime intelligence. You know what I mean? Behind all this, like we know the grays, several different types of these grays, with the exception of, quote, unquote, the Ebens are biological cyborgs of some type. They're like almost robots of varying type, varied types, but we don't ever hear about the real master race, the prime intelligence behind them. That's we right. don't hear about that. We go into reptilians and all these other things, Orion Wars and yada, yada, yada. We don't hear about the prime intelligences behind all that. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's just food for thought again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And will we recognize them if we did see them? Do they even have any, what kind, What type of containers do they have for their consciousness? These are all things that are very, very interesting. You know, and I, I'll say something else. I was going to ask you this. I have a question before we get done. With okay. that. When dealing with the orbs, which are so popular right now, and I've had a lot of people ask you, do you think, and other remote viewers, do you think that the shadow beings and the shadows people are saying are remote viewers? I think a lot of these orbs we're seeing are remote, remote viewers. And not just are you seeing people, species that can take their mer Merkaba, their energy body, and make it into a spear for intergalactic, interdimensional travel, but they're using that quantum hologram also, okay? And the quantum hologram is being used when they're remote viewing through the Akashic records. We've talked about that, what the Akashic records are. They're really the wormholes, the Makos, and all the information around them is the information of the universe. It's the, the hard drives in the universe. So when you have a civilization that no longer exists, they're a type five, type six, whatever, but they use actually the wormhole, the Mako itself, the energy of it as their prime source, they still exist within the Akashic records, within the record of the Mako. And they can interact with us through what? Our brain waves. The Makos and the black holes work like brain waves. 
similar to the neurons of our life, of our brain. When I talk about that, the quantum hologram, how something goes through information, it creates that perfect copy of it, the quantum hologram that goes around the record. We're talking about Edgar Mitchell and Quantrek. He was talking about that stuff too. He knew they were getting trained on this, what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyway, um, just again, food for thought. So once you start remote viewing, what better way for these beings to interact with your brain waves and your brain and your thought, your consciousness than through these Akashic records? So when we see these orbs and you see what looked like these beings looking through there. Last time I was on here, I don't want to get laughed at again, but I said my friend Bill was going on about the Stewie head thing. I didn't know who the hell is Stewie. But, you know, it's, it's, it's that cartoon. But when I looked at the picture and I look at Stewie, I see what he's saying. But how many people, and I don't know, I said this last time, I don't know if Kira's in here, but Kira's got a bunch of pictures. She took at that Assetti Ranch of orbs, and a bunch of them, several of them look like there's something in there, like something looking out or something. That So my question to you is this. Do you think those could be remote viewers too, period? Oh, man. Whether, whether interdimensional, extra, extragalactic, whatever. I don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, anything is possible at this point, for sure. Now, I do believe, I mean, I have encountered people remote viewing me before, and I've actually seen them, okay? And, uh, and, and it can look like anything from uh, sparkly lights to a hologram. I mean, it can pretty much be anything, you know. Uh, shadow people, I'm still not convinced that shadow people are of remote viewers. I've, I have never resonated with that whatsoever. I don't believe that. But some people say they're, they're I get asked that. I get asked that when it comes to remote viewing. I get asked that more than I get any other remote viewing questions or shadow people. No, I th shadow people. I have seen shadow people in real life and they have a horrible low vibe energy to them. No. And I, that is not a remote viewer in my you know opinion. What? Somebody I've interacted with a couple of times. She's my friend on Facebook. Um, and she's the first person I ever heard talk about um, shadow beings and people. Is Heidi Heidi Hollis? Heidi Hollis is her name. I can contact her. Maybe she would come on here and be on the show. She's really cool, and she's got kind of um, I think a religious view of it, but that's all right. But ultimately, she's saying that she feels the Hat Man and the Shadow Man, and they're all demonic. And you know, I've encountered the Shat the Hat the Hat the, the Hat Man before when I was much younger. At least I saw him, and uh, it created. A bad feeling period whatever those things are they create negative emotions and they're feeding on that um, you said archeem's in there i think they call it in here they call it like loose right but yeah. really it's negative deadly organ radiation negative emotions and things they feed on that stuff you know so right. and you've got these beings that do, don't have physical bodies that really feed on that and on your awareness and luminosity since they don't have any of their own that's right yeah, it's I mean, I, I say pretty often. I've, I've talked about the um, about the me me remote viewing myself. Okay, for sure. And I and I do believe that I w I think it was like sparkly lights or something. But I just I have never resonated with shadow beings being remote viewers. I just I don't think so. My my answer to that is no. I don't think so. If anybody anybody asks me again, the answer is no. I don't think that shadow beings are remote viewers, even though people will argue with me about this sometimes. And I just, I don't argue. I quit arguing. I don't argue with people at all. And Poncho Zort, thank you so much. He just gifted five the Cryptid Huntress memberships. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. I hope you guys, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, that's really yeah. nice. That's nice. It that, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 uh, that's it's really interesting. You know, and it's too bad that so much of everything going on down here is just so, uh, dealing with some of this stuff is just so evil. There's this dark tinge on everything that steps people from want to mess with it and just go with some of religion that says, oh, stuff we're talking about now is just demonic, yada, yada. We've got to know who the players are in the game, what the game is. You've got to know. You know, that's why we're here partially and to make this place better for people like your son. You know, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I chose never reproduce. Thank goodness. At least not Earth humans. But I I, uh, I don't miss that in terms of I would be worried about the world that my child would be growing up in. My grandchildren, this place is in big trouble. That's one of the reasons I came forward to start talking. 
Because that's yeah. represent you and I represent of the majority of the population that has contact. It's not like we're special. It's so much of it going on, but it's just sequestered. You're not supposed to talk about it. You know, coming from the black culture, we really don't talk about extraterrestrial contact nearly as much. It's changing now, but it's one of those things, you know, people are actually saying, Jimmy Church asked me a lot. He says, man, I, one of my producers is black. I know he's a contactee, but he won't talk to me about it. And I'm dealing with all this stuff. I'm tired how it is, man. You know, but hopefully things are changing. When again, we're coming to type one civilization. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, we're talking about it. This is this is our little safe space over here at the Cryptid Hunters channel and on your channel, Barry Littleton, on YouTube. Um, yeah. The shadow we're, bad channel. No. The bad. No, the bad of thy shadow bad. <laughs> I gotta say, no, Barry. My my video started getting taken down on Facebook this week. Okay, so. Really? Yeah, so we've got it. So you guys, oh, wow. please, everybody, everybody that's wow. listening, y'all, please go to my Rumble channel just in case things get dicey. Please go to my Rumble channel and subscribe there. I have all of my videos up on Rumble. Well, I'm, they're not up to date, but I'll I'll make them up to date tomorrow when I have when I have some free time. Maybe. Oh, you know, I thought, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Case. You know, I, I think I got lucky then. A couple of days ago, I posted a patent, a United States Google patent that is over a directed energy weapon. They, they got it right there. I mean, it's it's a heavy one too, and it's based off uh, oscillating antenna and arrays. And I mean, it it's maybe giving some of that Havana syndrome and things like that. It's it's quite interesting, you know. When you have these people say they're target individuals, it raises you know raises the stakes when you get evidence like that on a patent that says it's direct. It says it's right there. So if you're on my Facebook friend, look at the post I put up the last. It's it's on there maybe several days ago. I'm surprised I didn't get in trouble for it. Yeah, you're not on there Rumble. You, you need to start a Rumble channel too, Barry. Sweet peas asking you. You need to. You don't. Ha you don't have a Rumble channel, do you? W weren't you telling me I need to? Did I, don't I need to be TikToking or whatever? <laughs> yeah. Like Logan Paul supposed to be TikToking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, hey, I don't know I what can, Rumble if is. I can do it, yeah. You can do it. If, <laughs> if I can do it, you know how to do stories on Instagram now, so you can do TikTok. Okay. I'll help you. I'll help you. Hey, maybe maybe we could do some uh, choreographed dances together on TikTok. <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm man. kidding. Just call me <laughs> Scatman Carruthers. Scatman Barry. Yeah, that's just going real good. My brother would never let me download that. That live that down. <laughs> oh my God. We can go have some rap battles on TikTok or something. Okay, so I know you would enjoy um, that. That um, would that know, would um, probably scare people away, actually. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, it might, might go viral for comedy, you know. But um, uh, I think I think yeah. again, the information on this was good, and everything that we brought together. And there was a oh, I'm sorry, there was a book I was going to recommend to another one that's just when talking about these near Earth objects and that thing that I call the living library that comes back. There's a woman, Barbara Marshanique. A lot of people are familiar with her for the bringers of the dawn. That was like that eighties book that brought the Pleiadian into the mainstream, but she wrote a couple other books. One of them, I don't have a copy of it in here, but it's called the living library. And in that book, she talks about some of that. And I believe that and I have past life memories of technology like that and things going out, stuff like that that made me pay real close attention to like Star Trek, the original series that had one called Nomad and they had that movie that had V'ger. And Vija was like the Voyager probe that went out and came back. And it was all sentient, like way sentient. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when dealing with this, the living library and technology that comes back that can help us go forward again, we need to be paying attention to that. You know, so what are those things out there? And I'll bring that up again, those near earth objects. I won't give their names again because I'm going bore everybody. But when looking at things like that um, Bennu asteroid, I told you before that they um, – had actually an exhibit of that in the Smithsonian. It's supposed to be the original artifact they put out. And you could go up there and take a picture of it. I would think cam cameras everybody has now, I hope a bunch of people went and took pictures before they swapped that out for a fake piece. When you look at that or the piece of moon rock that's on Biden's office, it's in his on his desk. He's got a piece of moon rock on there. And you look at that under electron microscope, what they're finding, Richard Holden, we're talking about that, is this seems to have like some type of almost pico gears on it that this is some sort of a technology is yeah. that why they're sending that Bennu spacecraft out there to grab pieces of that thing and bring it back 
I'm sorry, not Benu. It's Ar Osiris Rex was the was was the probe that went to the Manu asteroid and got wow. pieces of it and brought it back to Earth. And now it's going to get another one. Somebody said they're thinking about sending it to Apoth Apophis. You yeah. know, it's, it's very interesting, but these things are showing evidence of being advanced technology that is in, you know, fossilized. So it's food for thought, you know, when dealing with what, what they're hiding from us is in plain sight. Mm -hmm. And this goes way beyond Richard Hoagland's book of um, Dark Mission where he talks about all the stuff on the moon that he saw when he worked for JPL and them. He's the first one that really talked about that, 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 um, the tower on the dark side. He talked about the, 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 the palace that they have. There's pictures of all that. I did some videos on that on YouTube too, showing those pictures, how he said the shards were like, one of them was like 60 miles above the, the surface. And that there are these crystalline structures, you know, when I talked, to that when that whistleblower was talking me to death at some point, the individual was telling me, because uh, we talked about the dark side of the moon and or, or, let's say the far side of the moon, it's not really dark. But anyway, um, they had told me that it was part that what that was in the why it looked crystalline back there, those structures is because it got hit by the solar flash. And the solar flash came across and hit the, the dark side of the moon and it caused a lot of the things that look crystallized when the solar flash in. I can't say I agree with that. I'm not as much of a solar flash guy, but hey, whatever. It's a possibility, you know, another another good doomsday scenario for us. We're gonna be exterminated by solar flash. You know, <laughs> just throw that in there with the other ones, John. I hope not, it'd go quick though, it'd be okay. Um, I ha okay, I need to address this before we go tonight. So Poncho is asking, or he's saying that I have, there's two choices on my Rumble. Yes, I did not know how to work my Rumble channel very well. And, uh, and somehow they got uploaded to two, but it's like, well, I thought it was one. So I don't know. I am so low tech, y'all. But uh, yeah, just go to either one of them. All my videos go to both. Okay, so the one the one that I thought was my main channel is the one with the like Egyptian background on my picture there. Okay, so but either one of them, they both work, but they're both me as far as I know. Okay, uh, I do I do have like two choices there. So hey, it's just backup, my opinion. I don't know, uh, but yeah, I'm on Rumble. You can find the videos there. I will update that tomorrow. I'll have all the videos up to date tomorrow. Okay, but um. But yeah, man, this has been a wonderful show tonight, Barry. I think that we really covered a lot of great topics tonight. So thank you for being wow. here. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure working with you. I said uh, before, you know, but thank you. And thank you to the audience. And, um, and, you know, a lot of your audience is starting to contact me outside of these shows. And they're really nice people. And I try to respond a little bit and stuff and good people, you know, that uh, very aware. I think that's import important because it's people like that just helping change this world one person at a time one light at a time you know yeah that's right well, we're we're working we're working on it um you know opening some minds i mean i i, I think everybody probably learned something tonight. i learned some stuff tonight and uh and that's what I, I like to do and i know um i like to help and whatever whatever way we can if my remote viewing will help answer some questions or even lead us to asking more questions and i've done my job okay i've done my job tonight so um yeah Thank you, y'all. This is a fun place for Thursday nights. It is. And uh, man, man, oh yeah. And so we've got, we've even got um, Saturday nights now. On Saturday night, I, I, Cryptoville, who's in the chat, is going to be my guest on Saturday. And we're going to be looking into oh, a, 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 his dogman experience uh, with cryptids wearing paint and camouflage and war paint and stuff on their faces. So we're going to be getting into that topic on Saturday. You guys are going to need to buckle up for that one. That's going to be a cool topic, Barry. You know, that's very interesting because I mentioned probably not on here, but my friend that uh, he was um, Native American from the Oklahoma mountains. And uh, he, he had mentioned uh, encountering the little people when he was a kid and he talked to them. And when I asked him what they looked like, he said they were about knee high, little, little, little sort of the knee high, knee high. But he said they had on old Native American garb. And he just he looked at me. He said they had on Barry. They had on war paint. I said, really? He said, yeah. They all had on war paint. The two both of them I saw. I thought that was just fascinating, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And he said, then he talked about how much he trouble he got into for talking to them because they kidnapped kids. We hear that over oh. and over again. You had a guest that said that too. What was his name? Yeah. Uh, Fred, the guy that, Fred Roll from Alaska. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Alaska. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Well, we, yeah, we have a lot to discuss on Saturday. So I hope you guys will all come back and hang out on Saturday. And I'm trying to think, who do we have coming on on Sunday? I have a really good guess at Space Out Radio, too. I can't remember. Man, I just, I, I get busy. And uh, I've got a great guest coming on Saturday, Sunday night, too. And I can't remember who it is. So uh, I will definitely be announcing that on Saturday. But I, actually, I'll be announcing it tonight. I'll probably start doing the promos. As soon as I, I click off of our shows, like, I start working on my next show immediately. Okay, so I'm always over here working, uh, coming up with new ideas and um, and doing the work. Okay, so, uh, yeah. So Dennis says he's heard of Dogman being seen wearing feathers. Wow. Yeah. There ain't um, only one mountain in Oklahoma. Oh, that's not true. There's the Wichita Mountains. That's not true. Yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. I just see some people here. say stuff to say, you know. <laughs> I love Poncho. Poncho's awesome, man. Poncho, thank you for gifting all those uh, memberships tonight, too. That was very sweet. And if anybody would like to become a member of the channel, just hit the join button. You may have to go to your laptop or your PC to do it, but uh, you can join. And I do exclusive content there and, uh, and put some interesting face-to-face -face sit down videos on there and just talk. And it's, it's a good time. Okay. So yeah. Well, you guys, Barry, Barry where can everybody find you and uh, your amazing YouTube channel? YouTube channel under Barry Littleton. I'm on Patreon under Barry Littleton. Um, uh, I've got a lot of stuff on YouTube actually that comes from Patreon under there. I'm also on Facebook. I'm trying to be more communicative on there under Barry Littleton. And um, uh, my website is barrylittleton.com. Don't do a lot there, but the links are there. And that's about it. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Long Island Island Island. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. So we got Long Island Bigfoot Mike. Congratulations. You're a two month member. Is that two months? Oh my God. Thank you for being a member for two months. That is so sweet. I That's appreciate cool. that. So we got, you got your anniversary night tonight. That's amazing. I love it. I love seeing all the stars by everybody's names. You guys, that, it just makes me feel great. It makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside that you guys would want to actually be a member here and hang out with me on the show. Cool. So yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank y'all so much for being here. I will see you guys Saturday night and then back on Sunday. It's Space Out Radio, Barry. It's been another great show. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, hey, thank you for having me on. Thank you to the audience too for not booing me out and much love. <laughs> no, booze. <laughs> no booze. All right. Well, uh, I guess until next time, Barry. Thank you for all of your infinite wisdom, and I appreciate your friendship. Okay. Thank you. And we'll we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Have a great night. Stay safe out there. <laughs>